Bask just got back up. Let's see if there are any entertainers that are signed in yet. Thanks, Classic. I actually should go up and spend a little time with her. She's about to make that last trip. Uh, this is Basilisk now, it just restarted. Belly scritches. Those are the best kind of scritches. I don't think Publish 9 is live yet. We can check. No, it's not. Oh well. I think um, I'm going to try to find an entertainer and um, while I'm listening and watching the entertainer I'm going to run AFK for a bit just to say goodbye. Alright, sir, I have a good one. Hey, Christian. Yeah, this game is like nostalgia heaven. I haven't played Star Citizen myself, but I've watched a lot of videos of it and actually seen somebody play it in the same room as me before. Do you like it, Review? And if so, what do you like about it?
No, there's nobody here. All right, that's actually a perfect opportunity to go AFK. All right, let me um, let me go spend a couple more minutes with my dog before they take her. I'll be back in a bit, guys.
All right. Let me see if I can pull this up before I go. That was my steam, by the way. took the last picture. Containers yet. None here. Let's go to uh, let's go to feed. Hey Kubi. Next, Rodex and Razor. Sorry, I was AFK when you guys joined. Thanks, Ferelli. You're weird as hell. Is the cantina empty? No, there we go.
Yeah, more people on YouTube than on Twitch. Currently, there is a small solar system that can be explored and missions can be done in space. There's a racing and dogfight space section uh, for dogfights and racing, and a first-person shooter combat mode, like Call of Duty, that has both walking and EVA spacewalking aspects on the maps. You can become wanted and hunted by NPCs and players alike, but would have to navigate your way out of a PvP-only spawn space station and jump back to a security space station while permanently TF, uh, permanently TF player wait, bleh, while permanently TF TF'd, while players hunt you and then have to hack your security profile there to clear your wanted level to be able to interact with other players. I mean, it sounds cool. Honestly, it, it just sounds like such a huge project. Do you know what size team they have working on it? Yeah, I mean, it's just, the scope of the game is just so big, like, I can't even comprehend. Operation D, some guy named Frodo told you, I'm lost, I need to get this ring to Mordor while you were AFK. Should have said Mustafar. I need to get this ring to Mustafar. Damn, a 50 to 100 page update every month? That's crazy. Like, I'm all for reading patch notes, but 50 to 100 pages of patch notes? My God. Yeah, I mean, all the Jedi stuff that you're going to see me do is going to be on the Nova server, though. I, I can't... I don't want to let anybody know what my Jedi's name is on Basilisk.
Actually, that's a really good idea for Ellie. I'm gonna order dinner for my family. I imagine they won't even be thinking about food. Oh my god, Star Wars Combine, that shit still exists? That's unbelievable. I played that for a little bit, but it just took so long to do anything. It took you like, like everything was in real time, so it would take you like an hour and a half to walk from one side of a city to the other. Like, Jesus. Um, I got buffed in feed, and I can give you doctor buffs if you're coming with me. Hey, Eric's back. That is... I don't know, that's cute and disturbing at the same time. I don't know how I would feel to have my... Is it my own dog stuffed? Or do they just, like, make a stuffed pet that looked like your dog? I don't know that I would do that. That's too weird. hundred and sixty million dollars and it's fun that's just that's just weird um yeah no it, it's cool dude the uh, my family is taking my dog to be put down she's got cancer I actually that picture on stream down here I, I literally just took this picture like a half hour ago it's gonna be the last picture of her Sad story, but I mean, it's life, man. Just gotta keep moving forward.
Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I can't go. Like, I I went up there. I you know said my goodbyes, had my peace with her, but like I can't go with them to for them to actually do it. I get way too attached to dogs. Like I'm a 28 year old dude most of the time, but I turn into like a 12 year old girl around cute dogs, man. I'm a sucker for dogs. I think a lot of people are like that though, like if when a person dies in a movie, like it's no big deal. But man, when a dog dies in a movie, you see grown men tearing up. I'm one of those men. That's me. You guys ever seen I Am Legend with Will Smith? It's like that zombie apocalypse movie where he's got that German Shepherd dog with him, like the first half of the movie. Spoilers, the dog dies, and it's like the saddest fucking thing in the movie. It, it was more sad when the dog died than when like he lost his wife and daughter. Or son, or whoever it was. Old Yeller is another one. I just, I can't deal, man. So yeah, this uh this tonight's stream is dedicated to Sadie. I know her picture is blocking the radar though, so let's uh You know what, you don't really need chat. It's fine. Whatever. Where do we want this? That works. Roddick says, I had a bad experience with a vet totally messing up putting my cat, your baby cat, to sleep because she had cancer. Oh, your baby, which was a cat, not baby cat. Uh, she had cancer and they didn't find out right away because she screamed and flopped off the table and died staring at you with a look of fear on her face? Dude. How are you not fucked up in the head from something like that? That would, like, destroy me. I would need counseling after that. So tonight's tonight's stream is like real talk with Mobius and friends. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, the click nicks. I thought those were Black Sun. I got really excited for a moment. Alec, you ever give your dog those ice cream cups? Uh, yeah. You mean puppy cups? All the fucking time. I didn't save this picture. Hold on, let me see if I can find this. I don't have a picture of my dog eating a puppy cup, but I do have what we gave her for Thanksgiving dinner one year. Where 
is it? There we go. Oh, and the cat's in this picture too, which is cute. About to run into the Geonosians. Here. This was a. Uh, this was her and our cat's Thanksgiving treat. They got to clean all of the plates from everybody that was at dinner. It was like their own Thanksgiving feast. Organic dishwashers, go away, we're eating, pretty much. These clicknicks are like the ultimate trolls. Always have been. We have a Pembroke Welsh Corgi, and his mind is tighter than laser focus once he knows he is being fed. The moment we say okay at him, he dives in and nothing can stop him from eating his food. Yeah, I think a lot of dogs are like that. One of the best things about going to my friend Takora's house is the fact that she has four dogs. And if you if you've followed my channel for a while, you've probably seen some videos of them. I know a, a couple people think that I should separate like my real life videos from my gaming videos. And let's be honest, like I don't. It's not like I'm super popular. It doesn't matter. But uh, I'm not gonna create a second channel just for that. But like her her four dogs are amazing and them trying to feed four dogs at the same time is fucking hilarious i mean they're all really good because we can get them all to sit and then they sit there and then they wait and they're all like their eyes are just like like you said laser focus and then as soon as you turn around with their bowls like they all start jumping up and they're like oh my god this is the best thing in the world like, night after night, it's like the greatest thing ever. 
Can I explain what black sun hunting is? Of course I can. So there are these NPCs in the game called Black Suns. They're humanoids. It's like a like a mercenary faction. And they drop Bounty Hunter armor, which is a component used to make Mandalorian armor, which isn't particularly good, but it's super rare and super expensive because it looks so cool. And they drop an item called a Jetpack Base, which is the most important crafting component to make a jetpack. And the only way to get those items is to find these completely random spawns that can spawn anywhere on one of three planets. Either Yavin, Dathomir, or Endor. So I just, I like Yavin because the, uh, the Black Suns show up on my mini-map down here in the bottom left as red dots with red rings around them. And there are only two types of things that spawn on Yavin that are red dots with red rings. It's the Black Sun and Clicknicks. So I don't really have to pay attention to what I'm driving past. As long as I'm looking at my mini-map, if, if I don't see red ring with, or red dot with red ring, then I know it's not a Black Sun. Whereas on like Endor or Dathomir, there's so many different things that spawn like that that you have to like check each one. You don't have to do that here. But unfortunately, there's no, like, trick. There's no location on the planet that they spawn. Um, and there's no real, like, way to get them to spawn. You just have to get lucky. No, they can... I'm sorry, I, I must have... I misspoke. Um... They spawn on all three, but hunting them on Yavin is just, in my opinion, easier than the other two locations. But you can do any of them. And as far as I know, the spawn rate is the same on all three planets. Otherwise, I would gladly hunt on a different one if it had a higher spawn rate, because it's it can be quite boring trying to find them, but that's why I stream this, because then I can talk to you guys. It makes it less boring. And thank you, Christian. The quality in which you stream the game is pretty dope. You should have more subs. Uh, I mean, I'm growing. I get I get a couple subs every day. I think I average, like, five subs a day. YouTube is not what I do for a living. This is not a career. This is just something that I do when I have time to do it. <laughs> if you find them, they're yours, dude. vids helped you out a lot well I appreciate it I'm glad that you find them helpful I know this game can be quite a challenge to someone who's never played it before so that was that was kind of the idea as I'm actually that wasn't the idea when I first started the idea was just to make like a typical let's play series and uh, I don't think that would have done nearly as well as the educational stuff did but it was like after I made two or three videos all the co all the comments that I was getting were just absolutely not true but uh, the Let's Play video series quickly became an educational series because that's what people wanted. And I think if I'd have just done a, a typical Let's Play, like I'd have even less subs than I do now. The air traffic control thing, I'm still waiting, man. It's... That was the plane that I fly, or used to fly, until someone crashed it. And Sadie did actually...
What are my hopes for the repopulation? I mean, I hang on to my hopes, man. My hopes are that it stops feeling like such an early access game. It really, like, the potential gameplay-wise is there, but it's so buggy and laggy and unpolished. Like, I get it. That's what games in alpha are. Are laggy and buggy and stuff, because that's typically not the stuff they fix until, like, after the rest of the core mechanics are in place. But I feel like the core mechanics are in place. Like, it's totally playable. It's just missing that smooth experience. Like, it's such a painful experience to play the game because of all the bugs and all the lag that it doesn't matter how good your core gameplay is. Like, if you're not having fun, then you're not going to play the game. And I love the potential that game has. The crafting system is amazing. The combat system isn't revolutionary, isn't new by any means, but it's good. So, like, I would totally play that game, but it's just... It's frustratingly buggy. So if they can, you know, squash those bugs and clean it up a little bit so that it's actually more enjoyable to play the actual game, then I'm on board. Taxon, I am not the SWG wiki. I will use the SWG wiki to answer your question so that you think I'm the SWG wiki. Dude, I had someone ask me yesterday how many items can you put into a medium house. I, I didn't even know. I had to look it up. As a matter of fact, I still don't know. I think it's 300, right? It's 100 items for every lot. At least I thought it was. But I know guild halls take up five lots, and I think they can only have 400 items. We have Count Dooku and I'm a Miner are both out here surveying. Dude looks nothing like Count Dooku. When Swotor eventually dies, they'll be forced to make a new Star Wars MMO. You know, I I can see them making a Star Wars MMO after Episode 9 comes out, based during, like, the Episode 9 time frame. Whenever, whatever that is. Like, First Order, Resistance, New Republic. That would be, assuming the movies are good, which I, I'm pretty sure they will be, then, like, that's probably Disney's plan. Because that'll give them another, say, another, like, three or four years to, to really squeeze the Old Republic and milk it for everything that it's worth before they decide to retire it. That's my prediction, anyway. I haven't played The Old Republic in months. It might be close to a year.
Yeah, Porkins, I'm I'm think you're watching the stream, but I can't you can't send a group invite to somebody that you're not next to. I know they're still adding stuff to Swotor, but like the stuff that they're adding, I can't speak for the latest expansion, like the Knights of the Fallen Empire or whatever, because obviously I haven't played in a year. But like the the cartel market just was the final nail in the coffin, man. They're adding junk. They're adding cosmetic, crazy, dumb, like, out-of-this-world stuff that should never exist in Star Wars junk. They're wow. They, it's totally, like, when the Old Republic first came out, everyone was like, wow, it's a World of Warcraft clone, just with Star Wars. Which I was okay with, because World of Warcraft is obviously super successful. Love it or hate it, you can't deny that it's a successful game. So, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, I might not like World of Warcraft myself, which I have come around to actually accept it now. It's not that bad. But anyway, I'm like, alright, if World of Warcraft is obviously super successful, why wouldn't you want that as a Star Wars game? But now we're starting to see why. Because they're adding, like, the same... Like, Warcraft is known for having ridiculous stuff in the game, right? Like, you, you have, like, a little gnome riding around in a giant mechanical, like, suit with, like, wolverine claws on the fists. Like, just out-of-this-world ridiculous stuff. But that's WoW's style. WoW is very, like, cartoony and goofy and, and like, that's, that fits with their theme. That doesn't fit in Star Wars, but they're still adding the crazy, ridiculous stuff like WoW into the Old Republic, and that is like totally immersion breaking to me. Like the candy cane fucking colored lightsabers and shit? No. No. There's no, there's no reason for that. We were fine when it when the game launched and it was red, blue, green, and yellow. And then eventually you were able to get like purple and cyan. And then eventually you could get orange and white. And like that was that was good. Alright, we were good with that. And then they started adding those multicolor combo bullshit. I'm very salty over this stuff, man. Also, I want to play an MMO where crafting is, like, necessary. Thanks, my young friend. Thank you for the follow, Unholy Ties. Um, like, imagine playing Galaxies where you couldn't do crafting and had to rely on the loot that you got from killing things. That's, like, that's game-breaking, right? Like, you can't, you can't play Galaxies without player-crafted items. Now, go make a tune on the Old Republic and see how far you can get through the game before you have to buy something that was player made. I can guarantee you, you can hit max level and probably get end game gear without buying a single player made item. The crafting is completely pointless. I'm sure there are times where it could help, but it's not necessary.
No, see, I, Christian, I wouldn't say zero exploration because I will say my favorite, my hands down favorite part of the Old Republic when I played were the Datacrons. And as a matter of fact, if you go back, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it for you. I'm not even gonna make you guys do it. I'm gonna look this up for you. Some of the very first videos that I ever made were Old Republic Datacron walkthrough videos. I only ever made two of them because at the time my videos were limited to 15 minutes. Oh no, I did three of them. This video, holy shit, January 1st, 2012. Hold on. Ready, wait, let me kill the music. This is one of my earliest videos. Look at that. Windows Movie Maker for the win. The shitty, like, text shadow. Get ready for the really crappy mic quality, too. Oh look, it's got it's got like an intro. We're gonna like zoom in on the planet. This is my first reaction video to one of my old videos, by the way. Hello everyone, this is oh Mobius here. I'm on the planet Tython, uh, which is the homeworld for the Jedi Knight and Jedi Consulate <laughs> classes for the Republic. Um, this video is going to show you how to uh, locate and reach the three Datacrons that are hidden here. Oh my god. Uh, the first one's actually not far from the Jedi Temple itself. You can see it there in the, in the distance. Um, I'm on the bridge that leads south away from the temple. Um, you're just gonna head south, um, follow up this pathway, and up this way a little bit. We're just so gonna we're head up this left. way. <laughs> um, and if you look oh, shit. up on the face of that cliff there, there's a green glow, which is a good indication there's a datacron up there. Um, you can see there's a mouth of a, of a cave there, um, as well as some rocks. Your first thought might be to jump up the rocks to get to it. I heard that it is possible, but there's a much easier way to reach it. Uh, if you just head to your right, uh, now heading west, follow this path. Actually, um, you're going to... Um, but it's not too bad. And here's the first Datacron, plus two Endurance. I loved these Datacrons, though. The second one is actually in the ruins of Kaleth, off to the west. Uh, you can see here I'm at the entrance to the ruins. Instead of following the path to the left, you're going to head up the right, up this sloped pillar. Um, and actually, if you look off to the right, you can see it in the distance there, the purple glow. Um, so as you're heading up this, you want no problem. Alright. You get the idea. But, like... Man. So there was exploration in the Old Republic. You had, like, every planet had like five or six datacrons on it except for the starting planets that only had three and um like when you found them they gave you permanent increases to your stats for like it was a one-time thing so once you found one like you couldn't interact with it again but it was it's so cool like i loved that aspect of the game but obviously once you once you found them all like the the uh, challenge was gone
Nah, no kills yet. I haven't even found any yet, just click nicks. <laughs> he just saw the Order Public and said no, he is not playing that game. No, I'm not. Oh yeah, dude, I have I had all the titles from like the the first couple events that they had that you could only like if you participated in them, you got titles that you could never get again. I had all of that. I played that game since closed beta. So anytime they offered something that was like a limited time thing, I got it. And that's why the cartel market pissed me off so much because up until the cartel market, I was like one of the people on the server that had everything that you could have. And then they added the cartel market and there was just way too much shit that you could never get unless you sank like hundreds of dollars into opening random pot, like random uh, crates. Yep, the world bosses, how you got like the purple lightsaber crystal schematic, like I had all of it. And then they were like, ah, we see that you have beaten our game. We're going to make it impossible for you to do that unless you give us all of your money. And I was like, nope. The Hut Cartel expansion is what made it. I mean, that's it's right around the same time that it went free to play. Actually, the Hut Cartel expansion added some cool stuff. Some exploration stuff, as a matter of fact. They added, like, those, um, the sentry droids that you had to go back and use, like, the uh, macro binoculars and scan the, the droids that were hidden all over the planets. That was fun. Because it was like hunting for Datacrons, but instead of looking for uh, unique like things that you had to jump on it was like you had to spot something that could potentially be really far away mckeb is where i started to like really give up on the game and then they were like oh our next expansion is going to be space and i started to get really excited i'm like oh man like finally because space and when in the game when it launched was one of the biggest disappointments it was basically like Star Fox. But Star Wars, like that tunnel shooter, and um, they were like, alright, we're going to come out with a space expansion, it's going to not be on rails, you're actually going to have like full control over your plane, or your, your starship, or whatever, and you're going to be able to customize your ship and upgrade it, and we were like, oh man, this sounds like we might be getting like the Old Republic's version of Jump to Lightspeed, right? And then it came out, and it was like a fucking arena battle game, where you queued up. And you just fought in, like, the same arenas over the same objectives over and over again. And it was more repetitive bullshit. Is this Count Dooku? No. I found two different people. Yeah, sounded too good to be true because it was. It's just so sad that we'll never get remakes of the games that we really want remakes of. Because they're so niche. They're not, they wouldn't be worth the investment to studios like EA to make those games because they won't make the profits back off of them. Like, we'll never see X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter or X-Wing Alliance remade. We'll... Well, you know, we might actually see Republic Commando 2 event at some point, but it'll be... It'll be a terrible letdown. It'll be like a Call of Duty... Star Wars.
But we won't see those other games because, like, they're, they don't appeal to the masses. There's, like, a small percentage of us really hardcore Star Wars fans that are playing stupid games like this. Like, if you weren't a Star Wars fan, how would you, how would you pitch this game to somebody who's not a hardcore Star Wars fan? Be like, yeah, come play this game where you're going to spend two hours driving around the woods looking for creatures that may or may not even be there. The dude would be like, yeah, I'm not going to play that game. That That's just boring. But we play it because it's Star Wars and that's freaking cool to us. But we're the minority there. Like, that's the problem. So they'll never make a Star Wars Galaxies 2 because it won't be... They won't get the money through sales off of it that they'd have to spend to make it. Yeah, MMO with the best crafting and non-combat systems ever. That, I mean, hmm. I don't know, EVE Online's got some pretty amazing non-combat systems. I don't know if Galaxies is the best, but it's, it's up there. Are they gonna do Revenge of the Wookiees pack still or no? I... I don't know how they're gonna handle the expansions. Other than Jump to Lightspeed, because those were all post-combat upgrade. Right, I know we looked this up before. I know now that they're pre-NGE, but I still think they're post-CU. Well, Grey Jeff, you hear this music that I'm playing? This music is from a game called Stellaris, which if you haven't already heard of it, you should definitely look into it because it's basically an up-to-date version of Rebellion. I got it way back when it came out. It just came out a little over a year ago. Like, beginning of May was its one-year anniversary. And um, I played it a bunch when it first came out, and then I stopped playing it for a really long time. And I just started playing it again because it went on sale for its anniversary. And one of my friends picked it up. And I've been addicted to it again. It's a really fun strategy game. It's obviously not Star Wars, but I think there is a Star Wars mod for it. But gameplay-wise, it's very, very much like Rebellion. It's a little bit more complicated than Rebellion. But I think everything that you can do in Rebellion, you can do in this. Minus, like... The, um, like, sabotage missions and, like, the, uh, the VIP stuff that you can do, like, uh, surveillance and sabotage and diplomacy missions. I don't think you can really do that. There is diplomacy in it, but it's not done the same way as Rebellion. Excuse me. But it's, it's the closest thing you can get that I've found. And the music is phenomenal, if you haven't noticed from the stream. I try to keep it kind of quiet, but you probably hear it at some point. Joseph, um, I know you can do X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter games on Game Ranger. Have you ever heard of that? It's like a... Uh, I think it's like a virtual LAN tool. Kind of like Hamachi, if you've ever used that. But it's like... It's a little bit more than that. It's like a, like a lobby program. I'm not sure how it works, to be honest with you. But I do know a lot of people are playing some of those old 90s Star Wars games on there, like... X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter, Rebellion, Republic Commando, the games that like you can't typically play online anymore are being kept alive on Game Ranger. Steam has them, but I don't know how connecting to other players through Steam works.
Steam has them and GOG has them. Game Ranger is not a is not a, a tool that you buy them through. It's just a tool that you can play them through. Yeah, I trust GOG more than I trust Steam. GOG games are also DRM free, so if Steam ever decides to remove a game from its library, you won't uh, you won't lose it if you bought it on GOG. I typically buy games on Steam out of convenience. Games that I plan on playing with friends, if they're on Steam, are typically easier to do so because Steam normalizes a lot of stuff and streamlines installation and that sort of thing. A lot of the stuff I buy on GOG is just like old school single player games that I don't plan on ever playing with someone. They're pretty damn rare, Kubi. I've gone a whole two-hour buff session without finding them before. It's been almost an hour. It's been about 50 minutes. is not very good. There you go. When do I expect Publish 9 to be released? I'm not sure. It's close. We are going to get a date about a week. Uh, um, again, a prediction of mine, not for sure, for certain. But we're probably going to get a, a release date about a week ahead of time. So all these like times Basilisk goes down, people get all excited. They're like, oh, Publish 9, here it comes. And... No, it's not going to be like a surprise update. Like, we're going to know about it ahead of time. Oh yeah, man, I had all of those games back then, like the, the 90s Star Wars games. I've had them and finished, like, all of them. Rogue Squadron, Shadows of the Empire, Episode 1 Racer. Move over to PlayStation, you have Jedi Power Battles, Demolition, Phantom Menace. Uh, what else did I have? Masters of the Terrace Kasi.
All right, great, Jeff. It was good talking to you. Have a good one. I mean, believe it or not, there are ways you can help accelerate Publish 9's release date. By making a character on the Nova server and going on there and playtesting all the village quests, you are helping them bug test. And that's really what it takes to get the game or to get the publish finished is people playing through all the missions, making sure everything works. And don't forget, when Publish 9 drops, you're not going to see anybody with it. No, there won't be any Jedi for at least three and a half months. Because people are still going to have to do the village and grind all the XP and, you know, make mistakes and show up on the terminals. So, even if Jedi, or even if Publish 9 comes out in late June, that's like July, August, September, you probably won't see Jedi regularly until like October, November. Well, except for Jedi like this. Obviously, you'll still see these guys everywhere. Can bounty hunters show up at the village, though? Yes, they can. Um, but by the time you have your lightsaber, and by the time you're considered a Jedi, you're done with the village. Like, there's no... There's really no point for a bounty hunter to go to the village because they can't... They can't hunt somebody who's Force-sensitive. They can only hunt somebody who's already become Jedi. Yeah, the punishment for death is going to be XP loss, but apparently the, X, the negative cap on XP is like 10 million. So... If you keep getting killed, like... You'll never progress. Well, yeah, of course. The, the bounty hunter would have to be force sensitive to get in. But it doesn't... It doesn't take a lot for a bounty hunter to get glowy. Yeah, not only does... Okay, so, like, a lot of people, when they hear, oh, the death for a Jedi is XP loss, like, that's not too bad. Yeah, it's kind of really bad. Like, obviously, it's not as bad as permadeath, but a Jedi, not only can they go into negatives with their XP, but Jedi also earn XP at a fifth of the rate that a regular character earns XP. So, like, I, I don't, I'd have to look at the profession calculator to see how much XP the Jedi skills cost. I imagine they're pretty expensive. So, not only do the Jedi skill boxes cost a pretty high amount of XP, but it's going to take you five times longer to reach those amounts than it would if you were, like, a Rifleman or a Terrace Kasi. So, when you die and you lose you know, 250,000 XP, and you go negative 250,000, that's like losing 1.25 million XP as a non-Jedi. So it's still pretty bad. Yeah, that picture of a dog is a, is just a picture, by the way. 
It's not a camera, if that's if you guys were thinking it was. It would be nice to set up like a doggy cam. But these are just pictures of a dog that is literally being put to sleep uh, right about now, probably. There you go. All right, Christian, have a good night. Uh, classic, when you start dropping your skills to learn Jedi skills, you are going to start learning, or you're going to start getting Jedi XP, not regular XP. So you're going to have to kill stuff with your lightsaber. Dude, I don't know if it would ever get to the point where it would be faster to create a new character because you'd still have to go through the village again then. Deshi, not yet. Basilisk uh, still does not have Jedi, but Nova does. And as soon as they work all the bugs out on Nova and they're confident that everything is working the way it's supposed to, then we will have them on Basilisk. So it's getting very, very close. We still don't have a release date or anything like that, but it is getting close. Yeah, so, classic, imagine this. Imagine you are a Master Rifleman, okay? And imagine imagine you're like a Master Rifleman Master Doctor. And you want to give up Rifleman and pick up Tarascasi instead. You still want to keep Master Doctor, but you want to you wanna switch your combat profession. But you have no skill points to do it. So, first of all, you might be able to one-shot, like a really powerful enemy with a T-21 because you're a Master Rifleman, right? But what happens when you start grinding unarmed XP? Like, when you unequip that rifle... What the hell just happened? I don't know what just happened. Anyway. Um, when you unequip that rifle and start punching and hitting things and kicking things unarmed, you go from being, like, a super badass to being, like, a brand new tune, right? Like, you can't... You have to go back to Moss Eisley or, or Theed or Cornet and start killing the weak-ass mobs that are around the outside of the city because you can't take on anything stronger than that because you have no unarmed skills. So it, um, it's, it's kind of like that about? with a lightsaber, though. Old Dog 69 thanks for the follow. So just because it's a lightsaber doesn't mean you're very powerful with it yet. I mean, yeah, it's a freaking lightsaber, but it, it, this is a, an RPG that we're playing here. So gameplay-wise, even though you're using a freaking lightsaber, it's just like you're picking up a new combat profession. You're going to miss a lot of your attacks. The damage on it is not going to be very strong because it's a first-generation lightsaber. So... When you start to surrender, like, your master level skills and start fighting with a lightsaber, like, you're going to be very, very weak. You're going to have to find those low-level mobs to kill. And, on top of that, the lowest level Jedi skills cost, like, eight skill points each. And the highest level elite skills, like master Thanks, profession, cost, like, two points each. Kubi, thanks for the follow. So when you are ready to learn your first Jedi skill, you're going to have to surrender like three of your elite profession skills in order to get enough skill points. So the, the exchange rate at the start is bad. You're going to lose a lot of your really powerful, your really um, high like like stat mods and skill mods and stuff to get the really, really weak combat moves and really, really small skill mods and stat mods from the Jedi trees. So there's a there's a phase where like the first maybe like one third 
of your Jedi grind, you are so squishy. Like, you can't even dream of standing up against a bounty hunter at that point in your grind. If you see someone coming, you run. You have your swoop out all the time. You might even want to place, like, a small house out right where in front of where you're grinding so that if you see someone coming towards you, you can run inside a private structure. Like, you don't fuck around because there is nothing you can do. Nothing. And yes, they... They made it to where you cannot get your own bounty mission on the terminals. But obviously, if you're in a guild with a bunch of people you trust, you can have guildmates get your mission. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if I would call it fun, but it's certainly something. Oh yeah, I carried, I carried a small generic house deed with me everywhere I went on back in live. And if I knew I was going to be fighting in the same spot for like an extended period of time, I would drop the house, make sure it's private, make sure that like my radar was nice and big and I could see if any characters were driving towards you. Cause you know, like if I was out here where I am right now and I decided I was going to kill these mobs over here and, and grind on these whisper birds, this is a bad example cause you can't build houses on Yavin, but let's say we were on like Dantooine or something. And I knew I was going to be killing those birds. If I'm watching my radar and I see a blue dot or like a player, I guess it could be a purple dot, driving, coming towards you, like straight at you at full speed, that's not a coincidence. That's a bounty hunter. Like, you, you hit peace, you run away from the birds, you run into the house. You know, hopefully your health isn't super low from fighting. Kubi, there's, yeah, as Nexrotix is explaining, there's a visibility system. So anytime you do any Jedi-related action, which is an attack, a force power, or even equipping your lightsaber, because switching weapons is a combat action, so equipping a lightsaber is considered, you know, like a, a Jedi action... Anytime you do any sort of Jedi action within like 30 or 40 meters of a player or a humanoid NPC, so like a Black Sun or a Stormtrooper or any, any humanoid, anything that you could loot instead of harvest in the game, gives you visibility points. And once you get enough visibility points, your name starts to show up on the Bounty Hunter terminals as a, as a mission. Um... And I, the only way to get rid of your visibility points is to let a bounty hunter kill you. Which will give you the, all the negative penalties associated with dying as a Jedi. Or, I think it is wait a week in real time without gaining visibility. Any more visibility points. So, you could just like not log on to that Jedi for a week and then you'll be fine. Or, just you could still play on that Jedi and just be super careful about where you grind and as long as you don't do anything again that adds to your visibility within a week then you drop off but uh yeah see I don't know if having your lightsaber equipped adds to visibility or equipping it adds to visibility I think just equipping it but I think if you if you were to have it in your hand and drive past somebody, I think you're okay. Because you didn't do any action. It was already in your hand. I'd have to I'll have to ask one of the de the developers about that later, because I'm not certain on that. But I believe that's how it works.
Yeah, I mean, it's probably not a good idea to chance it regardless. <laughs> like, even if, even if you never hear back and you don't know, like, just unequip it when you go into a city, before you go into a city. Deez, there's one other thing to add to that. It's He says, so don't equip lightsabers around players and don't grind around players. It's not just players, though. It's all humanoids. So keep that in mind. So, like, if you get a mission, and to, if you're a rebel and you get a mission to go kill stormtroopers, that mission will give you visibility if you use a lightsaber. Any sort of humanoid. Correct. I hear walking around upstairs. I wonder if they're back. Yeah, no slaughtering Ewoks with lightsabers. Somehow those primitive little teddy bears are going to go report you <laughs> to the Bounty Hunters Guild. Guys, I think we might go this whole session without finding a single black sun. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> yub nub, order 66, yub nub. That's funny. Yeah, I'm gonna ask. I don't think Ferrelli's here. I'm gonna ask somebody later about having the saber equipped. Let me see if I can get a hold of somebody now. Wait, Ferrelli is here. What time is it? I mean, if you got a tornado coming close, man, you should probably go. <laughs> I don't want, like... I don't want your blood on my hands, man.
I'm now picturing something like this. Ewok on the communicator. Hi, yes, I would like to report a Jedi slaughtering my friends in our village. Imagine, like, the Ewok, or the Imperial Police are like, uh, it's those damn Ewoks calling again. They're like, what is it this time? Uh, yes, hello, officer. I'd like to report another case of domestic violence. Uh, no, actually, it was a Jedi this time. And, uh, by the way, both of my parents, uh, my brothers and my sisters are all dead. And he's coming towards me next. And then imagine they finally catch the Jedi and they're interviewing him or like interrogating him. They're like, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it, son? And they're like, I, had, I did it all for this. And he holds up like Ewok crossbow. Like that shitty put together with a couple sticks and a, and a, and a wire made of like sinew. I did it all for this. Ewok lives matter. Like, that's funny, Ewok Lives Matter, but it should be, like, Jawa Lives Matter. <laughs> like, we should we should all go to Mos Eisley and walk around the cantina protesting Jawa Lives Matter every time someone kills the Jawa that spawns outside the door. And then we'll have someone kill him and be like, well, I mean, he was wearing a hoodie. I thought I saw him. He was reaching for a weapon. I saw him. Oh, Clezzy. I li the I lied? Yeah, here. I lied. I still have it. I didn't I didn't set up the audio though. Make a character with orange hair, orange fly white hair, and start yelling at all the Jawas. Tell them you're gonna build a wall. That's great. Take, take in our, take, make Moss Lisley great again. <laughs> do it. Somebody do it. You can't, can't name yourself Trump though. You gotta, cause you're. It's technically against the. Uh, terms of service to impersonate celebrities so you'd have to like change your name you could be like Tonald Trump or something something stupid like that Yeah, I know the whole, like, Drumpf, what his name actually was, but I, I still think that that could be argued to still be impersonating a celebrity since technically that was his name too. Look, not that I think, I mean, I guarantee you there's a Donald and a Trump character already, right? Let's see, Donald... Donald is now your friend. And 
add friend Trump. Trump is now your friend too. So I'm sure people do it anyway, but I like to play by the rules. Uh, next Rodix, I changed it. It's not um, Bank Heist on my channel, it's Assault. It's the same system though. So if you do exclamation point, Assault, A-S-S-A-U-L-T with a number, that should work. Yeah, I haven't configured the bot all that well, so a lot of, like, the basic stuff that you've probably used in other channels won't work here. I still have to go in there and set all that shit up. Trumple thin skin? That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty good. My favorite Star Wars soundtrack, dude. See that's a that's a tough question that I, I don't think I can answer. And I know I can't answer this because, believe it or not, I've actually looked into licensing Star Wars music for my YouTube videos. And I realized when I signed up on uh, its Sony Music Entertainment's website that owns the rights to most of the soundtracks, when I signed up on there and started looking through their collection, I realized that if I were to, to do any sort of licensing, since I have to license it like by album which means if I were to do, if I were actually to like put money into it I would have to choose one movie at a time to license so I was like oh shit all right so which one would I do like Empire Strikes Back has the Battle of Hoth and the most importantly the Imperial March but like they they all have the main theme but all of them are a little different Episode 1 has some amazing, like, tracks. The, all of the prequels have amazing tracks. But all of the classics, like all the the original trilogy, have all, like, the really well-known themes. So, I don't know, man. I would, I might have to just say Empire Strikes Back because it has the Imperial March and that's so iconic. Uh, Casirio, the draw distance resets itself depending, like sometimes randomly so what you want to do your game probably looks like this um maybe even less than that maybe like this so if your game looks like this and it looks real shitty what you're going to want to do is open your options under graphics field of view i usually put mine around 90 but that's not going to increase your draw distance that's just your field of view viewing distance is here but even just by increasing viewing distance, it still looks like shit. Because, like, you see you get all this pop-in and stuff, like, right in front of you. That's going to be under terrain. That's these two top sliders on terrain. You want to make sure these go all the way up. That's how you make the game look not so much like a potato. But we, like I said, you do want to be careful because for some reason, especially if you if you do multiple clients open at the same time, these top two sliders seem to reset themselves down to zero pretty often. So typically, when I first open the game, this is like the first thing I check. 
you can tell by looking at the radar in the bottom left here if um, if they reset themselves because you see how pixelated the outside of this radar looks watch what happens to those big blocky pixels when I increase these and bam see how the resolution of the mini map just got a whole lot sharper the uh, the two of those are are tied together Look, man, episode one was not a good movie, but damn, did that music, the music was really good. It's a Liam Neeson. Guys, we have 30 minutes left, and we haven't found a single spawn. Wait, what? What was that pick I sent? You sent? What pick? What did I just do? Um, on Dantooine, I get my missions from a player city called Orion, but really any player city that has the improved job market specialization is what you want to look for. It gives you like a 15 or a 20% increase in mission payout. Yeah, I think most player cities on Dantooine have the improved job market specialization just because people know that that's, like, how to get the highest paying missions. But, um, it tells you when you enter a city what the specialization it is. It'll be like, you have entered Orion, Metropolis, improved job market, or something like that. So that's, that's what you're looking for. Yeshim says he found some. Oh. 
Ooh, this is putting me to sleep. Um, Casirio Nexrotix in my Twitch chat is saying Dantooine, top science outpost. The town to the northwest and directly west are both improved job market, and you can take missions from one town toward the other and end at a mission terminal. They're both 1,500 meters apart from each other. He did not, but I believe one of them is the Veil. I don't... I haven't been a Dantooine in a while, but... If he's talking about the area I think he's talking about, I'm pretty sure one of them is the Veil. <laughs> the bail. The whale. <sighs> I have to take a nap after this. God. 25 minutes. The fail. Yes. This whole hunt has been the fail. Here they are, there's three of them. Shout out to Yeshim for finding these. Hey Alex, no, I'm not going to play on Legends. I, um, I have played on Empire and Flames, and it's actually pretty cool. But, uh, I don't, I'm probably not going to play on an NGE server.
Yeah, nap time or coffee time for sure. Hey Mark, welcome to the channel. Hey Toasty Waffle. You mean for you? Here, all right. Amtrig says, I agree, the prequels could have been handled way better, but for me, the best thing about The Phantom Menace was Qui-Gon Jinn. You mean Liam Neeson. The Force is strong with Liam Neeson. So strong, in fact, that he has invaded my stream. And if somebody follows me on Twitch or donates, you will hear his voice echo through your computer headphones or speakers. Thanks, Mr. 420 Spy. I'm sure that uh, she is feeling better wherever she may be now. She's had a rough couple, uh, couple of nights the last couple of nights, so she might actually get a good night's rest wherever she is now. Um, that was my dog, Waffle, that just got put to sleep about an hour ago. So this stream is in her memory. Yeah, I heard the next Star Wars movie is supposed to be a Kenobi spinoff. Rumored. We might hear something about it at D23, the Disney convention in August. That's probably where we're going to get another Episode 8 trailer also. Yeah, Sadie is one with the Force. Yes. I'm here because you are here. Elfire, it was, she was a Bernie's. May the Neeson be with you. Thanks, dude. <laughs> Neeson. Like, I can never change that now. If I were to decide later that I don't want that to be my, like, follow and donation alert, I would feel bad. Oh no, Bounty Hunter works perfectly. Yeah, if you want to grind up Bounty Hunter, now's your chance. I mean, even... Okay, so so Jedi have not been implemented on Basilisk yet. They're coming soon, like you said. Um, but keep in mind that the way the village works, even once Publish 9 is added, it's going to be a good three months before Jedi actually start popping up because people still have to go through the whole village system. So, yeah, you could start your Bounty Hunter now, but you have at least three months to to get your template finished. Last wave.
much time we got left. Wow, about 15 minutes left. Such a disappointing hunt, man. Amtrick says, since he's never played on live, he doesn't really know how the village works entirely. So what comes after the village is complete for someone? So, assuming you've seen my videos on the village, you have to do, you have to unlock the six force sensitive branches. You have to grind all the XP and convert it to force sensitive XP. And then once you do that, you have to go through what are called the Padawan Trials, which are 15 mini quests they're they're kind of they're structured the same way that the village quests are structured but they're much simpler it's like go talk to this dude and choose the right dialogue option or go kill this thing and bring this th bringing whatever you loot off of it to this person or something like they're they're very easy i'll probably do all 15 of them in one video um, but it, they do require a lot of traveling because you get them from a mysterious shrine. Have you ever been driving out in the wild in Star Wars Galaxies and you might have discovered like these things that are just out there called mysterious shrines and they look like little statues. Well, that's what those are for. That's where a Jedi gets his uh, Padawan trials and um, his Padawan robes from these statues so every time you complete a padawan trial you have to drive all the way out to a mysterious shrine to hand it in and get the next one 15 times and these things there's like four of them on each planet but none of them are near any starports so hopefully on basilisk we might find like a player city that's close to one that you can shuttle to but yeah that's that's what comes next then once you complete the um oh and the 15th one the very last Padawan trial is a fight against a dark Jedi and some Sith Shadow Thugs that is very difficult. Um, it will actually require a group to do. So you are going to need friends to, um, to finish that one. I mean, unless your gear is really fucking top-notch. I think uh, Ferelli said that he soloed it on Nova, but I don't know what he used to do, to, uh, to do it with. Wow, Yeshim, nothing. Um, but after you finish the Padawan Trials, then you're officially a Jedi. You get your lightsaber. I think you get your lightsaber like halfway through the Trials, actually. But um, that's what's after the village. Hey, Odin, son. Wow. Liam Neeson is strong with the Force. Uh, Commander, no. There's a, Apparently there's a bug on Nova where you can't use the frog to get glowy. Like, I talked to Ferelli and he said that that character will be glowy after server reset now. But I can't... I can't access the village on that new character yet. I have to wait for Nova to restart. Yeah, I just got the confirmation. Everybody is home. Minus one pupper. <laughs> Toasty waffle. I appreciate it, dude. It's no problem.
Yeah, I'll definitely let somebody know. I'll let you guys in BOS know because I want to do it. Um, I want to do it with a partner so that uh, I can record it and we can see what that second reward is. The focused crystal. Yeah, Deshi. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be streaming my Jedi grind. I really want to. Like, like, <laughs> I like. Uh, I don't know. I have to figure out something. I have to figure out something. Maybe like. I can't even like block out the name because even if I blocked out the name and hid chat and did everything like blocked out my name on the inventory window like see I've already checked all this shit like I know where your name pops up it pops up on the inventory it pops up on the character select screen it pops up if you loot something while you're in a group like I've, I've done my research and I know where I would need to block my name out but it unfortunately it's more than just blocking the name because obviously you can see where I am even if I block out the coordinates on the um, on the radar people can tell what planet this is just by looking at it and I'm sure people can narrow it down based on um, like geography like people are smart and God forbid I have to go back to, into town or something and like people can see what the character looks like and then all it takes is somebody to like recognize him later like I, I can't stream it Part of me is like, you know, people are going to find out at some point anyway. Just like, who cares if people know? And just like, tell everybody. But on the other side of me is like, let's have some fun with it. Like, there are definitely people <laughs> that might, like if I don't say who it is, people might like, bounty hunters will go out and kill a Jedi. And like, after they kill that Jedi, they'll send them a tell and be like, so is this Mobius? <laughs> like, it's gonna be so funny. The people actually trying to figure it out. And that part of me is what prevents me from being like, ah, oh, fuck it, like, here, here it is. Oh yeah, it's way more complex than just covering my name. It's the name, it's the way, it's the coordinates. It's, you know, the character's actual appearance. Like, I can't open my map. If I just open my planetary map to see, like, where I am, then people, like, know where I am. And if anybody's stream sniping, like, it doesn't take long to, to drive across a planet. Area track can help. Like I, I have a master ranger, but I don't I don't typically use him for this stuff. Control shift H and YOLO that stream. Yeah, it's not control shift H for me, but I know what you're talking about. I mean I could. No, I can't, because then I can't tell if bounty hunters are pulling up on me. I see what you're trying to get me to do. I guess I could control H and then overlay overhead map and do it like that. That's too risky. I'm just gonna swing around the coast here back to this outpost and then call it a day
Um, sorry, TS, I kind of got off the, the topic of the Ranger. The reason I don't use the Ranger is because the tracking range for area track is only 500 meters, which, if you look at the, the radar I have here, this is 512 meters, this circle. Now, I understand that creatures don't spawn this far out. Cre the creature spawn range for you to actually see them is only about 210 meters. So that's only about half of this area here. But you have to remember that whenever you do an area track, you have to stop. You have to get off your swoop. You have to do the area track, which takes like five seconds of your character doing an animation. Then you have to scroll through the list and look at your results. Then you have to get back on your swoop. So like, it stops you from moving and takes time to do an area track. And you're not getting really that much more information from it than you would if you were to just keep driving. So, I don't know if it's faster or not. I just don't feel like it's faster, so I don't do it. It might be faster. It absolutely might be worth doing, but I uh, I don't feel that it does, personally. There are also some people that try Black Sun hunting on like an X-31 speeder because it's slower than the swoop. And you'll see sometimes creatures will spawn behind me because I'm actually driving so fast that it, it takes the game like a couple seconds to say, oh hey, there's a player in the area, I need to spawn creatures. So like there are times where I'll drive past spawns and then they pop up in an area that I've already driven past. Um, so by driving a slower vehicle, you prevent that from happening, but I feel like as long as I'm watching the radar, you can typically see stuff that spawns behind you before it disappears, and uh, I don't really see that as an issue. The X-31 does climb hills faster, but, um, I mean, we're not climbing any mountains here, really. My contact never got back to me about the uh, lightsaber in hand. Let me see something real quick. See how Yeshim's name popped up when he looted this combat staff? It's another area that I would have to block out if I were streaming. If I was in a group, of course. Okay, so I just messaged Mista, who has been working on the village for a very long time. Because one of the coders, or the developers, and he has confirmed that simply driving around with a lightsaber equipped does not give you visibility, only the action of equipping it. So there you go. That's your official answer on that. Um, 
Yeah, that uh, was very uneventful. That's a cool outfit. Composite helmet with RIS, chitin pants, chitin uh, biceps. Looks like RIS bracers, RIS boots. That's actually a pretty awesome outfit. That's a good idea, actually, Unholy, to get rid of the system messages. Aww. Pets. They're like doggies with beaks. Oh, that's a doggy. It's a pooper. <laughs> that face he makes. It's so goofy. We'll have to get one of these named uh, Sadie. I don't know if I can generate a... Uh, yeah, I got rid of my pets. Alright, let's do it. Let's do... Which one, though? I mean, that one looks kind of more like her. But it has a beak. Let's just do the one that actually looks like a dog. Oh, wait. Difficulty level 8. Why can't I... Darn. I can't do it on this tune. I'll have to do it on another tune later. They're, um... The max level creature you can have as a non-creature handler is 10. So... I can't, uh... I can't tame them. That was really nice. Ah, uh, just house pets. All right. Good. And then we will take them back to my house. It's a trap. <laughs> I thought I had pets in here already. I must have traded them to another to one of my alts because I swore I had one in here named Cleo, which is one of Tit Tick's dogs. That's weird. No, I'm gonna put them in our um, in our Tatooine Guild Hall because I think my house on lock is already getting too full. I've got so many lightsaber crystals and stuff taking up room in that house. But that's about all for tonight, guys. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, didn't get any good haul or anything, but doing the stream was kind of important to me. Well, I do have, you know what, actually, before we end the stream, I'm gonna pull up some old videos.
Not Old Republic videos, though. Speaking of lightsaber crystals, what is your favorite lightsaber color? Definitely the teal Sunrider's Destiny that you get from doing the melee accuracy quest. The guard dogs. You know, it's funny. Something we have in this guild hall that people don't even know about. Oh no. Somebody built a house nearby named Down's House. And now you can't move items down by typing in commands. Ugh. I don't think this will work. Nope. Oh, it did. Yeah, we have a Rancor in our ceiling. <laughs> Alright. So wait. Here we go. Kill the music. If we're gonna end the stream, we have to end the stream right. is like my least viewed playlist on YouTube, the dogs. I have to have some good memories. What? What you got? Yes, I, no I know I'm live now. Get it. Get it. I'm gonna throw it at you. I'm gonna throw it at you. I'm gonna throw more at you. I'm gonna throw it at you. Woo. She loved the snow. That's my finger. I'm gonna throw more at you. <laughs> Are you a mountain dog? Is this what it's like in the mountain? I'm gonna throw more. Boom! <laughs> Just smacked her in the side of the head.
All right. If you guys want to see more videos of the dogs, Sadie or Takora's dogs, I do have a playlist, a bunch of dog videos. But uh, I'll let you guys go. I might go grab some something to eat for dinner. But uh, yeah, that was her. Good old Sadie. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you all later.